sort of that sort of a mode. Um, and then what's, what's going on is as people are speaking, it's really actively facilitated, and the, as, as things are, are brought out, um, kind of using mirroring, um, getting, getting the group into listening into what people are saying, um, and continually trying to go deeper and bring the content that's relevant from there onto the boards that are up on the room. Um, and this is then kind of, lead, so this is leading into that mapping and measurement. Um, and we, we recognize that it was sort of less, less like a blueprint and more like tracking particles. You're, you're just looking for kind of where the, where the energy is and the interesting pieces that you're bringing in. Yeah, I please. Add on that, that um, this card maybe didn't fit exactly what the concept we were looking for, but like in this method, things get written on flip charts a lot. So it's not about measurement, and it's not even exactly about mapping, but it's like capturing stuff in the written record is one of the keys to the method. And so we were using this card to represent lots of flip charting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so from that, what you're looking for, and kind of one of the, one of the key things in it is, uh, is emergence. So that as these things are going, you're not going through a systematic process, but you're seeing what emerges out of that. Um, and then that kind of is feeding into this, this sort of triad uh, around here um, of, of the emergence, and naming, which we saw as both parts of the naming, you're naming where you're coming from uh, and the pieces that people are bringing in, but a key part is then beginning to get into that naming of the unknown and, and sort of a mix new frames for things uh, and, and naming your way sort of into, into new possibility. And so with that then going into, uh, into inquiry, and I don't know if you want to say anything more about kind of the inquiry piece. A lot of times the, the emergent breakthrough in this method is when you name a new statement of the problem or a statement of what is the key question we're addressing. And so that's why these, these three are in a tight circle, and there's a, a kind of a rhythm about that. Yeah, and so for divergence and convergence, um, again, this is, not, uh, this is not so much planned in terms of when you go into divergence or convergence, but that as people bring things forward, going with that energy. So someone may bring something in that's highly divergent, and, and then you do go deeper. You kind of bring that stuff out and see, see how that affects the emergence that's happening. Um, and, and you're moving sort of towards that convergence, and that the convergence is, as you're generating these possibilities, the convergence is less of a slow kind of moving towards alignment, and more looking for the aha, where the group is like, oh yeah, there's, there's something new, there's something that might, might work, or however it, it's framed. Um, so into that generate possibilities, and then and there's kind of this line going out here, where it's, it's trusting the wisdom with the group is kind of a key, uh, a key element of what, of what you're doing in this, of letting this thing emerge. Um, embracing dissonance and difference. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think about well, how to Well, it sounds like you really piece. welcome that in this method. Yeah. Like, I kind of saw that string of cards as other things that were definitely relevant to the method. They might not have made it into this, this level of specificity, but they were clearly, like, you know, other, other things that felt relevant. It's kind of like if you could use more cards, you probably would include these, or maybe if you were trying to get it down to seven, some of those might make it in or something. So, and then discharging, you absolutely can go with this. If there's, a, if there's emotional content that's coming up, that's encouraged. It's not, it's not sort of shoved down. But that that's then brought into this sort of a process where you are listening to it, you're going deeper and finding out, like, how is this relevant to the topic that's there? And putting that stuff kind of down onto the board so that it feeds in. Um, then uh, with distilling, again, that you're, you are, as things are coming, as probably especially as you get to those emergent or those aha places, mm -hmm. you, you're working towards distilling and, towards, and, and that fits with that reframing as well, kind of constantly trying to look for what's the essence of where we're heading. Um, and then kind of one of the core pieces there is that magic, that this isn't a method that you would necessarily use. You wouldn't use it to choose between A and B, that this is something you would use when a group is just absolutely blocked and it seems like there are no ways forward and that this is the way to find those unknown possibilities. Uh, so that's kind of that magic piece, and, and that again, that's why this, the last card we have on there is that blank card, because the key thing you're trying to get to here is the piece that you haven't seen, or the piece that you have liners that aren't letting you see. And I was deliberately going off the page. It's yeah. like we're heading off into the uncharted, <laughs> and the unknown, yeah. And did you say something at the beginning of no, the card? No, thanks, yeah. So this is like the key. This is, this is what's containing all of it, is yeah. that it's very much follow the energy. Um, it's, it's, it's not about a plan or about stages. And it's yeah. about really in providing a useful container for that energy to get, to get followed. So that's why, you know, there's no stack and it's super actively facilitated in order to make sure that you are really actively going with the energy of the group. And it's used where you don't know, or when, when there's a block yeah. or yeah. something. It's kind of, you use it on the impossible problem or the impossible person or something. The, the one other thing I would say about this before we maybe take questions or something mm -hmm. is... Um, that this, this chart, to me, this charting of it, this mapping of it, feels incomplete. It feels like this was a first pass mapping, yeah. not like a polished, completed mapping of this method. And so, you know, I would love to like sleep on it, come back, you know, work on it more, to really distill it down to the core, but it felt to me like these were the cards from the 91 cards. It feels like 
you know, these are definitely like the first cut. It feels really good to me. Exactly how they interrelate or how you use this to explain it or which ones you might take out or duplicative, but uh, that all still feels a little fuzzy to me. Great. A quick question, uh, two parts. Uh, can you give me just a couple examples of where this would be a really good type of methodology to use and where it wouldn't be? You use it on the impossible situation where the, the necessary result is a creative breakthrough okay. and when you have enough time. It is okay. not a method. If the power of constraint is like you have an hour, wrong method. Okay, good. Yeah. Thanks. So responses to those hearing it, like how was it to hear this method described using the cards? It was much it more... Helpful. Elucidating, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know for me, as someone who has like a, a passing ex uh, experience with it, and Tree who has a lot of familiarity with it, but with both of us knowing the cards fairly well, it was just an incredible experience to be able to go mm -hmm. through. Yeah. And the level to which using the cards to explain it was helping. so deepened mm -hmm. my understanding of it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like this was like a moment of really feeling the sense of possibility of the cards as a shared vocabulary for explaining yeah. methods, like. That possibility, which has been late in this project for years, I feel like it was coming a lot. Like yeah. I was living for that. You know, it was maybe one of the first times where I really have felt that because until we have enough of us with enough expertise in the cards where that becomes a really viable thing, yeah. and like that possibility can't fly yet. So that was an exciting moment. Yeah. Great. And I was going to say, quick, well, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that to me, having never experienced this particular method, my sense is that the Use of the cards is great for explaining kind of the flow and so on, but if we want a complete map, I think we need, there's some other ingredients that need to be written in to each of these maps in some way to make right. them useful. This right. would be specifically, specifically yeah. the example that Barry gave, which is when would you use this and when would you want to use this. The, map, the, the patterns themselves don't tell you that story. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Yeah. I, also, I also saw, you said a criticism about the um, this card here, which was measurement and, and mapping, and what I thought was, why didn't you use the distilling card? And the reason why is you only had one card, and you put the distilling over here, and you felt it was more important. No, the... that wasn't it. I wondered why you didn't use harvest. Yeah. I thought about harvest. I, I felt like I was debating between yeah. the, those okay. two. And, and, and there's thing about, is it, like, harvest is such a broad card, and mapping and measurement does get at that sense of concrete, like record result, like these physical artifact thing, somehow it gets at that in a way, but maybe Harvest is a better one, I don't know. Maybe we need a shared art, this came up before, we need, uh, somebody else had talked about a shared artifact um, mm -hmm. being a, process, a, a missing Element. pattern. Right. I'm going to move us along, yeah. if that's okay, just yeah. in terms of time.